Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Nacharskas. Today's the eighth uh, of eighth um, of May, twenty twenty. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Friday's morning recorded session. Where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, just, but as always, before we kind of jump in into the charts, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, also just before we jump into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, um, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top so it will take you to this page which we uh, which I believe you can find useful uh, now then let's quickly update this figure what's happening here globally so previous that was the previous number from um, from yesterday from yesterday when I was covering uh, when I was running the tea time video um, so now let's see what's happening here um, so um, the of course the number has risen um, and uh, well I mean the amount of deaths have has risen as well especially in the US so well I mean that's the current situation here where uh, it seems that yes uh, 4 million will be a realistic number in terms of infections so well, let's see how all that plays out and uh, yep we had a high daily number as well so yep uh, for, for let's continue observing this now jumping into a few charts um, by the way just to kind of remind you of today's events we have uh, well it is quite an important day today uh, first of all the uh, first of all UK is closed uh, due to a bank holiday but in terms of uh, other uh, well in terms of economic data releases uh, well it's going to be in could be quite an eventful day uh, be just because uh, we have the US NFPs, so US non-farm payrolls, uh, which are coming out today also together with the Canadian uh, employment figures as well. So we'll, this is what we'll keep an eye on. Of course, uh, as we all understand, um, the expectations are quite uh, for a large number to come out. So unemployment rate is expected to come out at 16% um, in the US, uh, comparing to the 4.4% the previous month. So of course, everything is due to the coronavirus. And uh, in Can Canada, also the uh, the, Cana uh, the Canadian unemployment rate is also expected to in have increased kind of dr dramatically, uh, going from the 7.8% 7 7 the previous uh, and expected to come out at around 18%. So basically not very good. Well, obvious, obviously, uh, but of course we'll we'll see how the real number uh, comes out. For now, we're not gonna uh, be uh, we're not gonna be uh, let's say pre trying to predict too much here. But um, uh, yeah, the non non farm payroll number as well itself is expected to come out at, at minus twenty two million. So uh, comparing to the previous minus seven hundred uh, k. So yeah, uh, a lot of worrying data uh, expected. So um, we'll we'll keep an eye we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, but jumping into here, just a quick update on the FTSE. Again, it's not going to be open today, but um, just wanted to show you that we managed to close above this 5,895 territory that I spoke about um, this week. So in a way, kind of this this could help the index to travel higher uh, next week but uh, the problem here is of course we'll see how the the cash index will behave because um, if the equities start sliding today then well I mean this could drag 
the FTSE back down and we could see on Monday uh, an opening gap here to the downside so again we'll keep an eye on the ind other indices uh, like for example the German DAX which uh, is showing good performance uh, yesterday showed good performance and uh, but still remained below this 10,820 territory that I talked about now looking at the cash index right now on the on the German DAX we can see that the price is already above this barrier so basically we'll have a nice opening gap here to the upside um, and uh, we there it increases the chances of a potential move further north so yep guys for now we'll probably stay a little bit more on the bullish side um, and uh, of course don't get me wrong we'll remain a little bit still on the also a little bit cautiously bullish I would say because uh, as I've mentioned this whole week um, if we get a break above the 10,820 territory we will start considering higher levels from here but to get comfortable with higher levels we need to see a push above the 11,235 zone which is the highest point of April so um, that's why guys yes uh, we are going to remain uh, cautiously bullish uh, but and continue uh, targeting slightly higher levels especially the highest point of April which is around the 11,235 zone uh, in terms of the downside we need to see a drop below the 10,280 territory in order to consider uh, the downside scenario gold now this one is amazing um, now this is what I what I talked about yesterday basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this little pattern here the potential descending triangle but what I was saying that in order to aim for lower levels we needed to see a nice good uh, daily close below this lower side of the triangle or in other words the uh, 1680 zone but as you can see uh, the commodity exploded to the upside it not only moved above this uh, above this downside line but it also overcame the uh, 17 uh, 15 territory that I spoke about so um, and it pushed above it um, it closed bang on it on it and uh, today this morning we're seeing a continuation move higher so in a way for now we will remain positive uh, we will continue targeting the upside and but we will for now we will only target the 1747 territory somewhere around here marked near the high near the highest point of April uh, in terms of the downside still the same idea remains we, we need to see a drop and ideally a close uh, a daily close below the 1680 zone before we could consider deeper extensions to the downside first of all let's get rid of this downside line as well and uh, now we can like I said we can look at it this way and uh, the don't forget that the commodity is still within a range so that's why we're going to target only uh, what could be the upper side of the range because the upper up, upper side of the range is a little bit here uh, a little bit tentative I would say here so yep uh, we'll keep an eye on this highest point of April uh, Brent oil quick update here uh, so yesterday it closed in the red however it remained above the 21 day EMA uh, I kept talking about this one this week so basically what I was saying that in a way if it continues to trade above this uh, 21 day EMA then yes we there is still positive positivity left in this commodity so uh, in a way this morning we're seeing a bit of a push higher um, as you can see however uh, given that we still have a bit of room here until uh, between uh, well between the current price and the 21 day EMA uh, maybe there could be a possibility we could fill this little territory and then if it finds support here then we could rebound and push higher however uh, if you're in a way what we could do here is just probably take a conservative approach yes the fact that it continues to trade above this 21 day EMA is good so that's kind of brings that a little a bit, a bit more positivity into the outlook into the near-term outlook um, we can keep an eye on the 32.21 zone which is the high of, of this week and uh, if we, a push above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and well the next target could be around the 36.10 zone or the this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 8th of January so so that's why uh, for now we'll, we'll be very careful if the uh, the commodity drops lower and, and moves below the 27.18 territory then well this would also place the uh, the price below the 21 day EMA and maybe deeper extensions to the downside could be possible but again for now let's probably uh, be very careful here uh, we're cautiously bullish on this one because again it's still kind of holding up here it, the our oscillators are suggesting that there could be still some more upside left so 
that's why we will continue examining the upside um, but we'll get a little bit more comfortable if we get a push above the uh, the high of this week the current high of this week near the 32.21 zone uh, ripple just a quick update here so the, um, the crypto managed to rebound from this upside support line taken from the low the 13th of March and uh, it, it pushed higher however today we're seeing a bit of weakness so it's currently trading in the red a little bit for the day um, but uh, yeah for now the only thing is that we can do is wait here so basically the same outlook remains uh, we need to see either a push above the 200 EMA here and ideally a push above the highest point of April near, near the 0 0.25 uh, sorry, 0.2357 zone in order to aim for higher levels because this way the uh, crypto would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep, uh, f a further acceleration to the upside could be possible. But again, uh, for now, uh, we'll be very careful because as we can see by our, by our oscillators, we have uh, a bit of a, a, a loss of momentum uh and the, uh, the 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 fall in the upside speed here you can see that yes it's losing speed and uh well i mean we're gonna that's why we're gonna be very careful because we don't want a scenario where we're gonna see a break of this uh upside line and a drop below the 0 0.2052 zone and then we could see the, this one selling off sharply however uh for some maybe it could be a good idea uh maybe you would like to see a bit of a, a deeper correction uh, before kind of entering into this one again. So, yep, that's why, guys, for now, we will remain neutral and wait for a clear break through one of the levels. Quick update on US dollar against the Turkish lira. So this one yesterday managed to create a new all-time high, hitting the area around the 7.2685 zone. And, uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, and then it kind of drifted back down sharply and closed uh, the uh, closed the day in the red. Um, it This morning we saw the, uh, the pair drifting further south. However, it remained above this upside support line. So it continues to trade above this upside support line. And if it continues to do that, then we could still see this one moving higher later on. Because, again, for now... Uh, we will uh, keep an eye on this upside support line and on this barrier here, this 7.0080 territory, which is the high of the 22nd of April, or actually, in other words, the highest point of April as well. So um, if we get a break below this, then, well, uh, we could start considering maybe lower levels. Uh, but if it continues to balance above the upside support line, still there is a chance for this one to reverse and push higher. Uh, USDJPY, so I talked about this one yesterday and this is where it's very interesting that um, it pushed higher, it pushed above this 106.34 level that I spoke about and uh, but it closed the day below it. So in a way um, for now, um, yes, you can see that the, the pair is trying to make its way back up here. Um, this is going to be very interesting to see if it can. Uh, again, we'll be very careful probably with this one. And uh, for now, from the the technical picture, yes, it says that we could see a bit of more upside, um, but if it if it fails to move above this downside line, then we could see another round of selling. But again, we do have the NFPs today, so uh, something that could uh, trigger a huge move here in USDJPY. So be very careful with this one. Um, so that's why, guys, probably let's wait until the uh, until the employment figures come out. Um, with the employment figures, by the way, now this is where it's going to be quite interesting that. Uh, for now, the market is pricing in, of course, a large uh, unemployment rate, a large uh, decline in non-farm payrolls. But if the figures uh, come out slightly better than the forecast, now this is where it could become very interesting because we could see then uh, the indices kind of strengthening in that a little bit, and uh, we could even within the dollar could strengthen that as well. So, so yeah, uh, this this pair could in a way uh, explode to the upside but again uh, let's like I said let's wait for the figures to come out first and then we'll we'll react to that um, USD CAD something also to keep in mind uh, so this one uh, it failed to reach the upper side of the of the of the range here this range that is trading in right now roughly between the 1.3856 and the 1.4262 zone um, it yesterday it sold off heavily and drifted and closed below the uh, 21 day EMA here on the daily chart so this is what I talked about guys uh, what I was saying that uh, throughout this week I was saying that if we get a 
um, a close below the 21 day EMA this increases the chances of a potential drift further south um, so yeah for now that's what we're gonna do here we're gonna aim for the lower side of the range which is around the 1.3856 and then we'll take it from there so um So now then jumping into USDCH chef um, here, right, this is the, this is what I was talking about yesterday. Um, basically it almost, it came close to reaching the upper side of the, of the range here, uh, which it is currently trading in. Uh, this is roughly between the 0 0.9588 zone on the downside and the 0 0.9797 on the upside. Um, and uh, it, it came close to reaching that that area the upper bound uh, it yes it moved above the 200 EMA 200 day EMA here but as you can see it kind of quickly sold off and drifted lower however it remained above the mm, the 100 EMA so basically for now basically uh, it's stuck here um, it's stuck above this this previous barrier that I talked talked about this week the uh, 0.9713 it's currently balancing above it now if it continues to do so, and as I said, uh, also keep your eyes on the NFPs today. Well, maybe we could get a surprise and a push higher, uh, where we could eventually actually test uh, the uh, the upper bound, or maybe even we could overcome it. So, uh, so yeah, guys. For now, all eyes are on this little territory here, the 0 0.9713. Uh, for now, it's providing decent support. If it continues to do so, then there is a chance for this one to still drift higher, um, and maybe even overcome the upper bound of the range. So basically, get out of the range and then we could consider much higher levels um, <clears throat> but if this starts dropping below the uh, 0 0.9713 territory and falls below and closes the day below the uh, 21 day EMA then well I mean we could start aiming for the lower bound of this range again so uh, and this move higher will kind of take it as a as a test of the upper side of the range and uh, yep then we could drift lower but again for now uh, we're, we're still a little we still have a bit of positivity left so uh, but wait for wait for that uh, NFP number and of course the uh, yep Canadian number is something to keep in mind that's probably more for the USD CAD but let's see how all this is going to play out uh, GBP USD so quick update here so um, the pair uh, managed to break the downside line so um, as you can see a bit of a crazy move here yesterday so okay so first of all it uh, in the morning it jumped higher after the uh, BOE interest rate decision but then it kind of eased off a bit and it drifted lower broke below the uh, the uh, the Thursday, uh, sorry, uh, Wednesday's low near the 1.2308. It drifted lower, but failed to reach our other target here near the uh, the the lowest point of April, uh, the lowest point of the sorry, the low of the 21st of April. There we go, that's, because that's the lowest point of April. Um, so it failed to reach that and quickly reversed uh, back to the upside. So basically, um, if you were trading this, um, you, your your stop loss was probably triggered. Um, and here right now, the, the difficulty is the, in the fact that um, looking at this four hour chart, yes, we've managed to break this downside line, but we still remain below all of these EMAs here. We need to see a nice, good, strong push above the 200 EMA in order to aim for higher levels. Uh, for now, we'll remain neutral. Uh, for now, we'll continue just observing uh, observing the price action here. But if we get a push above the 200-day EMA, which is roughly around the 1.2430 zone, then yes, we will get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels. Um, for now, we will uh, will like I said, we'll stay neutral. And uh, first of all, let's get rid of this downside line because it's no longer needed. But how we could look at this one is um, if we get if we start seeing this one dropping uh, back below this to little territory, the 1.23. 350 zone then maybe uh, the downside scenario could be back on the table so again for now uh, be very careful and uh, yep wait for uh, for those confirmation breaks and uh, of course for now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna 
keep an eye on the uh, on this 200 EMA and the level around the 1.24, 30 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. And AUDSD. So here the pair continues to travel nicely to the upside. So this week I talked about the, in the beginning of this week I talked about this idea that if this 21 day EMA provides decent support, we could see a nice rebound. So it did so and it it pushed higher. Um, however, what I was saying that we will only target this little area here, the 0 0.6570 level first. That's the high of the 30th of April, and uh, yep, we want to see if the pair can actually overcome this and create a new high, uh, and uh, can it overcome the highest point of April. So if it does, then yes, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and uh, yep, the next potential target for us could be around here, the 0 0.6677 zone, which as you can see, acted as a fantastic area of support in August, September, October, and a good area of resistance in March. So, yep, that's what we're going to be aiming for. But, uh, as I said, we need to see a, a nice good push above this high of, of April, which is roughly around the 0 0.6570 zone for now. Uh, again, let's be very careful, guys. Uh, again, let's keep an eye on the NFPs, and we'll see how this if this can push further north. Um, AUD, U, oh sorry, AUD, Euro USD, and this one f rebounded nicely. So it broke below the 1.0777. But as I as I keep mentioning through, uh, for a couple of weeks now, uh, we need to see a daily close, and we keep getting these overshoots, but we don't get a daily close. So as you can see, it pushed higher again. It overcame this level that I talked about yesterday. And let me just quickly jump in here uh, in the four-hour chart. Uh, this level here, the 1.0824 uh, zones. So in a way, um, it kind of uh, is creating this positive atmosphere again. Um, so it, it, there is a possibility for this one to drift higher, especially if it continues to balance above the 1.0824 uh, zone here. Um, and if it does that, then yes, higher levels could be met. Uh, well, then we will aim for the upper side of the of this little range again. So again, uh, for now, it's just range uh, range trading. Uh, but as I said, uh, with the pre as I mentioned with the previous pairs, keep your eyes on the NFPs today. So let's see how what kind of reaction we get from that, and uh, we'll take it from there for now. Because like I said, yes, for now it's it it lean it's leaning more towards the idea of seeing maybe a move back to towards the upper bound of the range. However, as I said, we do have uh, an interesting day ahead of us. So yeah, so let's see how all that is going to play out. So guys, I really hope you found it useful. And just to also just to mention one thing that uh, the next week from next week, hopefully the videos will be running live again. So um, so yeah, uh, please join me uh, next week uh, around seven uh, six o'clock GMT time uh, for my video and uh, yep uh, we'll take it we'll, uh, for a live video so hopefully there won't be any uh, any technical issues so we can resume after a while here and we can uh, we can get back to normal so yep um, hopefully everything runs smoothly and okay uh, but yep like I said guys I'll be waiting for you on my live uh, session on my live traders uh, tea espresso and tea time as well uh, until from Monday at the espresso will start at 6 o'clock GMT time and uh, yep uh, the tea time will be uh, will be around 13 15 GMT so yeah will join me then guys uh, but again let's of course catch my video today later on my my traders tea time uh, around 13 15 GMT uh, recorded session and uh, yeah we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and we'll take it from there so stay safe guys and thank you very much for watching and listening bye bye